Welcome to the post-practical lecture for experiment one. In this lecture, we will essentially be looking at the structure of your assignment or your assessment for experiment one. And um, the broad outline for that is, is broken up into two sections. So the report writing section, and then there are also some experimental questions. Now, both of these count 50 marks, totaling 100 marks for the entire assignment. Um, and I'll be focusing mainly on the report writing aspect because the experimental questions are quite straightforward and you've had time to discuss them in the lab with your demonstrators and everyone uh, involved in the course. And they're also quite Googleable. Um, so, yeah, we'll be focusing on this part, especially the results and discussion. This is the discussion part um, since the references was already handled in CMI 2A2. Right, so let's talk about the results and discussion section. So essentially in the results and discussion section, what we want is we want to report the results and start discussing it in the same way. So, or in the same sentence. So you say that it's something, you report something and start discussing what its chemical significance is already. And I have four bullet points here for you to guide you on what's generally considered in the results and discussion section. Um, now, not all of them are applicable to the first experiment, but they are in general applicable to when you do broader experiments and more uh, later on in the course, and especially in your third year, um, all of these will become more and more applicable. So first off, if you have things like yields, masses, instrumental data, and of course, there's subsequent discussion, um, observations of your colors, your physical properties of your products, so this one is very applicable to experiment one, um, that would you be, you would say the manganese, permanganate was purple and the subsequent discussion is why was it purple because it's in the manganese in the plus seven oxidative state is expected to be purple and then you explain you know so that's how you link it um, calculated values you saw that with cmy282 you sometimes had to collect a lot of data report that and then calculate something from that which is also still a result um, for example with your boiling point you plot your boiling points against your mole fractions and then you had to read off an effective point and that's still a result and you calculated that from something else but that comes in your result section and you can discuss that your well, subsequent discussion comes with it there um, and then also important for experiment one is of course things like structures chemical reactions and mechanisms um, so all the schemes all the redox reactions all the equilibria we looked at um, and how they fit in with this observations. So number two and number four really strongly link in experiment one. But like I said, you'll later on see, especially with experiment three, all of these become really appropriate and applicable um, in the results and discussion section. And you need to, you will refer back to this slide. Hopefully you'll refer back to it. Anyway, um, I say here, keep it concise. It must reflect all relevant information obtained. So in other words, do make mention of everything that you obtain, but you need to judge whether or not something is um, important. Um, and the best way usually to see if something is important is to use tables and figures and schemes, because you can quite quickly see in a table if you're mentioning something 17 times and whether or not it becomes redundant. Um, yes, so that's my biggest tip or uh, piece of advice for you is use tables, figures and schemes and equations to summarize your information that you've obtained here as best as possible. Right. When speaking of using a table format um, or a figure or a scheme, remember now that you always need to describe that table um, or figure or scheme or whatever table specifically shortly in a paragraph. And I'll get onto that some more. So you first tabulate your observations and you know what led to these observations in other words you know that manganese this oxidative state so oxidative state this color expected for example color observed do they correlate yes or no whatever and you can use the pre prac lectures content to guide you um, on these things so use tables to summarize your things or figures um, schemes to summarize all the information that will help you really put it nicely into context but don't forget to discuss what the figure means. Don't just plonk things in your document. Um, and I do make mention that, for example, for experiments 1.4 and 1.5, it might be a bit redundant or cumbersome to include a table. Um, those experiments are quite short 
and you didn't really form them yourself. So you can just discuss them in um, normal paragraph style. All right. So moving on to the concept of a table, because this is something I really wanted to discuss with you a long time ago, but now I've finally got some time. So let's say you have a table and you've now nicely summarized your results. We've made, we've had a synthesis of three compounds and we've included their structures, we've included their names, our product masses, um, the yields, and our purif purity of our final products, right? What we have. You always need to discuss that in some sort of chemical manner. In other words, we, we discuss it. I have some paragraph discussing my table, saying why is it important? What is the context? Is it my own results? Is it literature results? Is it a combination of the two? Is it a summary? Is it just some data? Is it is the data that has been processed into something else? What is it? And what is the significance of it, the chemical significance of it? No, 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 no. That's what you need to be doing with your information. So if you're setting up your tables of your results for your manganese or your vanadium or all these experiments that you've been doing, try to find a nice way to summarize all the information in a table and find in, put that into context with your paragraphs. And don't be afraid to write a little and explain what's going on there. Because if someone just sees a table, they're usually overwhelmed and don't know what the table means. So that's where your words come in. You explain to them what your table means. Right. Um, just some a little inconsistency. I see here I made a little inconsistency error. Don't do that. Don't be naughty. Okay. So that's tables and figures and schemes in essence. So oh, is it, it's the same, of course, applies to a table and a figure. If you have or a figure or a scheme. If you have a figure or a scheme that summarizes something, it still explain what it is. Don't just put it there. And very importantly, don't just screenshot things from my lectures or the practical guide. In fact, that won't be marked if you just screenshot something from there. From there. So please do your own work. Make your own tables. Make your own figures. Make your own schemes. Write your own reactions. You are now at a level where that should be something that you're able to do. So please spend some time and do that on your own. Don't just cheat. So speaking of table, I'm going to give you some help and give you an example of one of the of a table that you may use. So you may use the, the idea, the basic idea for this one. So this is for experiment 1.2 for the manganese experiment. I would typically go about summarizing it as follows. So I would list the test tubes. I would say, what is the environment or the reaction conditions? How have we changed from the starting? So of course you have a paragraph here explaining in this experiment, we do this and this and this and this. We change basic conditions, acidic conditions. We reduce it in basic or acidic conditions. You have a paragraph, right? Explaining all the stuff. Then you say, in table, da, 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 da. we see that. Da, da, da. Now you explain what in the table, right? So we're at the table. At the table. And now you look at it and I say, we have the test tubes, we have the environments, how we change the environments, and we have what we expect. In other words, from the scheme, what do we expect? Remember that big scheme that's in the practical guide as well as in the pre-prac lecture. And then we correlate that with the observed colors. So whatever you saw in the lab on the day, so you know, colorless, orange, green. And then actually, so what does the observed manganese species, so how does these correlate? Man colorless means plus two, orange means plus four, green means sure, plus six. So those two, for example, do not correlate. So in other words, in the discussion, that's something I'm going to discuss. I'm going to have to say whatever. I also make notes of what does each of these mean. So expected manganese, expected manganese species based on known redox reactions. Observed, expected manganese species based on color observed in the test tube constituents. Um, yeah, so you can use this layout. Of course, it's a very basic layout. So you can, you can um, elaborate or expand on this. So you can add some columns, um, some extra information if you would like. You can add pictures. I mean, that would be cool. If you actually took photos of the things that you did in the lab. You know, you can make it nice, right? So this is the basic layout to just try and help you. And this is typically what you have. And you have a few paragraphs discussing what you saw in here. Set up, set the stage, explain why, what the table is going to do. Give the table, discuss the table, right? So that's what I want you to do for experiments 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Specifically for 1.2, this is a very good um, starting point. 
um, and the other two, then you can sort of explain it on, in the same manner or, you know, use a table. Uh, maybe table for 1.3 won't be as intense as this one, but you can also use a table for that. All right. So I hope this has given you some chutzpah. I'm very motivated to go and do your work. Okay, so then finally the reference section. Um, remember, we use the Royal Society of Chemistry referencing or citation style. If you're using Mendeley, then great. Then you know you don't have to really stress or worry about anything because that will sort itself out. If you use it by hand, then please remember to look up how to use the RSC method. Um, it is listed in your 2A2 practical guide. You can go look it up over there. Um, so just, of course, make sure that all the spacings, full stops, italics, bold, everything like that is always um, good. <clears throat> and like I said, you can revise anything from 2A2 if there is, uh, if anything is unclear. All those links are still active. The practical guide will still be fully functional. You can rewatch the old videos. I don't take anything down um, yet. So, yeah, um, that's the referencing. Remember, that always just needs to be consistent. So that's 10 easy marks that you can really earn if you just do it well and consistent. And I mean, using Mendeley would be the best option for that or um, EndNote, if we've gotten onto the EndNote um, side of things. Um, EndNote, of course, then you need to contact the library for assistance. They provide EndNote assistance, right? But REC, all by hand, whichever way you would feel comfortable, but the Royal Society of Chemistry citation style. Then just my final resting words on this experiment. Please do read the, the questions carefully. So when you get to the assignment questions um, and in general, when doing this practical, just think clearly, just think logically about what you are putting down. Remember, we've now taught you a lot so in other words, we expect of you to apply everything that you've learned throughout the year. So you're now at the end of your second year. You're no longer at the beginning of your second year. The tolerance level is a bit lower of what um, is allowed um, or what we will just let you get away with. So please be careful in, when answering questions. Um, yeah, so that's essentially the first point. Then when you're answering any of the assignment questions, remember that you need to give at least three um, references for your assignment questions um, because there are things that you need to look up. So that's not three references per assignment question, just three references at least in the assignment question. Because I know there's at least three things that you would need to look up. So um, please actually look up everything. You know, always have a ref, ref, a literature source correlating with what you write down. You know, half the time, it's not like a test where you just need to remember everything. You now have time to look it up, ensure you have the right answer and put down what is expected of you. Okay. Use the mark allocation as a guide of how much is expected of you. If it's three marks, it means that is at least three full length sentences and full length sentences are 12 words. That's I feel like a grade five teacher. Um, like you need to really write a lot. That is, you need to write, well, not a lot. That's that's always a mis a misconception with how to earn marks. You don't need to necessarily write a lot to earn full marks. You need to write sense to, to earn the marks. But three marks is not necessarily an indication of just of the three points. Yes, it, three points will earn you three or three aspects will earn you three marks but those three points need to be um, explained well essentially so if you need six sentences for that great if you write well and you only need three then that's what you need so you need to judge yourself on how much you need to write to earn three marks and just writing the same things over and over is of course not going to earn you the mark so please mark allocation is provided for you so that you can judge how much you need to write or provide for us to earn full marks. Okay. And then a good way to look at it is always answer the question like you would expect me to explain it to you. So don't just answer the question. Of course, explain what's going on. So if we ask you to give some sort of oxid to write in a reaction equation for the oxidation of magnesium, do not just give it. So the question says, 
write the re reaction equation for the oxidation of mag magnesium. Then say, in your answer, the balanced reaction equation for the oxidation of magnesium is as follows. With your reference, there we go. Now you see. And then you can end off with magnesium is clearly oxidized from the zero state to the plus four state, or the plus two state actually is. It's a bit of an interesting debate of what's going on here, but anyway, um, you see? So you've now written a lot and it's worth two marks. Actually something that explains where you come from, you've referenced it, so it's worth two marks. That's what we are looking for. Not looking for anything less than that. And my final, my final point is remember all your submissions must be typed, fully typed. No handwritten, scanned in photos of anything will be accepted at all under any circumstances. As long as I live and breathe, we will no longer accept handwritten or forms of assignments. So everything must be typed. All your reaction equations must be typed like I type mine. I never give you anything that's handwritten. So I expect of you to give me nothing less. Of course, um, anything that's uh, figures and so forth, if it's an extensive figure, a very complex figure, which you want to draw an FDIR instrument and you drew that by hand, then that's fine. But you're not allowed to write anything by hand. You're not allowed to write your reaction equations by hand. You're not allowed to do the mathematics by hand. You're not allowed to do structures by hand. The tools are out there for you to do those things using a computer. And com chemical computer literacy is part of your training in this course or in the courses past. So in other words, we expect you to have mastered that by now and be able to use it. Right. So that's my last say on that. And with that, I wish you the best of luck and um, may the odds be ever be in your favor. Thank you for watching.